My name is Dr. Anand Bonstein, and I'm the chairwoman and director of the Smart Mobility Initiative in Israel's Prime Minister office. With me today, we have a very interesting guest with a very interesting story. So let's get acquainted with him all the way from LA. We have Dr. Carl Thomas Newman, who has been in the top management in the automotive industry for, 30, for more than 30 years with key positions, such as the CEO of Continental, led VW, Volkswagen, activity in China, and who was the CEO of Opel. Currently, he is an investor, a board member, and advisor to large corporates and startups, and we'll get to that. Now, Dr. Newman, I don't know, good morning, good afternoon. I don't know, in Israel now, it's afternoon. I think in LA, it's right early morning or something like that. Yes, right. Good morning, Anna, or good afternoon to Israel. So, what I wanted to tell you before we begin, just you know, to, to set the, the common ground between us, is that usually I don't like the more uh, typical, trivial questions like uh, the, you know, the connected autonomous shared electric vision, autonomous yes and no, electric when. Uh, and so what I want to do is I, ha I think we have the ability here to go a little deeper, to actually step out of the comfort zone. Is that okay with you? Yes, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. All right, then. So we can begin. So my first question is like this. You know, the, the, the automobile landscape changed dramatically from hardware to software, from selling products to selling services, uh, speaking of automation and different modes of mobility. And actually, the auto manufacturers and the component manufacturers, they, have, they are forced to deal with a new challenge, with a new world. Now, I want to take you and position you back as a CEO and of a company. And those companies, what happens is they have boards, the board of directors, which are quite conservative on the one hand. They're also not so flexible and not willing to change, which, by the way, is very, very understood. But still, you're a CEO that understands that there is a need to change. How do you confront those board of directors? How do you persuade them that things must be changed? Well, actually, that, that is really a very difficult subject. Um, and, and I think it's not only that you, you say they are conservative, but I think what they are, they are massive operations. So they have huge capital investments, assets they have to care for. They have literally hundreds of thousands of employees and, and they, they have a lot of responsibility and they come from a business which was so far very attractive for them. So they knew how to make money with, um, with cars and large SUVs, combustion engine. So first of all, you need to convince, you need yourself to be convinced. So as a management team, you have to come to the conclusion. Yes, obviously, I think if you argue with anyone, everyone would agree the trends you've just mentioned, like the move to software, the move to services, that's all real. But but how how is it really impacting my business? How is it really putting it upside down? How is it disruptive? And I think and take electromobility as it, as added into this this example. I think there still are uh, not everyone convinced that this is the case. So first of all, the management needs to be fully convinced. But then convincing the board takes. Um, I think it's there's no principle no no easy way to do that. That's really, really hard um, because you have to, con I think the only way to do it is to say, okay, we can proceed the old route. And if we do, or, or you have to be, you have to convince everyone that this old route will not be successful anymore. So if you now enter a new route, then you have to be successful in that new route. So go, you have to go there full steam. So it is, it is, you, there is some fundamental yeah, agreements you have to have about mm -hmm. what you look at the future, and that's really hard. Yes, it is. So, so you have to be convinced yourself, and once you're convinced, you can better persuade those board of directors, and that that there is a change, that we're going to a change, and the and the change is coming. How can they benefit from it? And now going back to another question is that from what I read about you, you already saw or foresaw the, this whole uh, um, need to change a couple of years back. 
um, one article I read about you is that you put you put on the table the problem of how do you create cars which are affordable using all those uh, new uh, um, uh, lidars or whatever new sensors. And you also joined the, the board of Apex AI, which is a very successful company. So you're we're very already how do you say acquainted and actively engaged in that. And then about a half a year ago, I read this headline that says Carl Thomas Newman joined board of Israeli startup. And I was saying to myself, wow, this is amazing. I mean, you are sitting in the board of Opel, of Mobis, of really big, serious companies. And I was saying to myself, first of all, that I felt very proud of my community, of the community, you know, as like as, as the mother or father of the, <laughs> of the, of the uh, smart mobility in Israel from the government side. For me, it was very, very, first of all, it, it, it was a big wow for me. But, the, but I was asking myself, what brings someone like you, um, again, with all your experience, with such uh, positions, high level positions, what brings someone like you to be engaged in the board of an Israeli company and not just an Israeli company, but a startup. And just to note that for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, so it's Carl joining a, the board of Karika, which is an Israeli startup that develops software or special training systems for autonomous vehicles. Yeah, well, first of all, you can be proud of your community uh, because <laughs> the, the main reason is I was really, really impressed about the whole scene of um, high tech, deep tech and, and startups in um, specifically Tel Aviv. And um, when I was in the job, like for example, General Motors had um, a research lab in Tel Aviv and I always heard about it and I met the people who are working there and I was really impressed about the, the amount of tech they had. But I never had an opportunity to, to go there actually when I was busy in my jobs. But right after I quitted at General Motors, like, like well, two, two years, two and a half years ago now, um, I, I traveled with a friend who knew Israel, Tel Aviv very well to mm -hmm. Tel Aviv and he introduced me to a number of startups and, and I was like totally impressed because I'm, I'm a tech guy so I, I like, I, I'm an electrical engineer by, by education and, and I love technology and I've seen so, so many startups and if you go to other places like you go to, to a startup event in Berlin they show you interesting things and you think this is really cool I could have had this idea so deliver food to someone or or some new business model but in israel with like every company that after after half an hour talking i couldn't even understand anymore what they're talking about because it was so over my head in terms of technology so i was so impressed about this deep deep technology and i also met katika then already then and they were still they were cortica so they were still using this ai technology for like many fields they still do but the idea then was, it was just an idea. Maybe at some point we could, they should spin out the automotive part. And when that happened, I got a phone call if I want to be on the board. And immediately I said, wow, this is really cool. And um, and I know Igal, um, the, the founder, I knew him from, yeah. from this first visit. And it's it's for me, it's great to work with startups, not only because of the tech, but also because of the spirit. Uh, everything is like fast, everything is optimistic. And um, I, I always look at, can I add any value? Because I'm only slowing them down <laughs> with, with my <laughs> mindset. <laughs> no, but my value comes from, I leave them alone with really what they do, but help them. Most of all, it's problems on the side of the go-to-market, um, mm -hmm. product definition, the business model itself, or how do you construct that? And then open them some doors and, and get them to the right people. So and whenever I feel there's a good combination, then it's really interesting also for me because it's a win-win. And, and I think that the startups uh, need, sometimes need a lot of help with directing them how to work with a big automotive uh, company. That's one, of, I mean, we had Better Place here working with Renault, which gave the first experience, but we wanna see more of that. And I think they have great technologies, they have great expertise, but they do need people like you to join uh, their boards and direct them to how to work with big companies. And, and then I, I, I have to just like actually, uh, the follow up questions, if, will I be able to read more headlines like that soon with the uh, Carl board and Israeli startup? Uh? Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> possibly, yes, but um, nothing I could announce here today. But I want to mention one more point, as you said, they need support, specifically automotive is difficult. 
Um, and for I, I think for two reasons. One is in automotive, everything takes time. So it, mm -hmm. it, if you expect you sell something and then your business starts, this is like years and years for development, testing, and then bringing into serious production. And they will never let you in um, a, a serious production um, product project without having you tested on a very small corner of the business. So there's normally a proof of concept and it takes forever. The second thing is, and you have to accept that, there's no way around it. And the second thing is, if one industry, then automotive is totally strictly process driven, like to develop a car and get it out in time, it takes that you are really process driven. And startups, that's normally exactly not what they are, right? They, they are more like spontaneous and, and process is often an issue. Yeah. But to work with these, these, these two worlds, that really takes some bridging possible yes <laughs> yes it is it is no i want to take us back to reality to, to corona times i mean we did experience globally some kind of a of a big change in the world and i mean and despite the amount of change or impact it had we do know that one of the big questions is how will the the, the financial and social projections impact the development a uh, uh, rate of mobility how, the mobility uh, uh, ecosystem the mobility companies how do you think that would look like well that's a question i think a lot of these days because what i already i think there's two possible reactions and we will see both and a mix of both the first is you can say, okay, now we have a big crisis. This is really deep and we have to like fix what we have. So for example, ticket for mobility. Now it's about, all about like focusing on building cars and selling them and mobility will move back to like shared economies over. There's no scooters, even in LA no more. There's no Ubers anymore. So this was all anyhow not working. Now it shows with this test that it's not, um, it's not um, sustainable. And so let's focus, happily focus on what we did before. Um, even on CO2, you could say now, well, let's relax a little bit and be a little bit more relaxed and sell SUVs as we can make money with them and push the electrification out a little bit. I think this, we will see this, I see it already. You also read already that people want to drive in their own cars now because they want, don't want to sit in public transport. But if we all do this and if industry does that, that's totally wrong because I think these trends which we have they will all come and whatever Corona did to this society, but we will share things. Uh, we will move to services. There will be this move to software. There will be um, uh, the, the, the um, autonomy, which will enable all new possibilities. So all of this will come. Electrification will come. All cars will be electric. But if you don't act on that and you slow down, you, you are falling even more behind. So I think that's a huge risk. On the other side, you could say it's a huge opportunity. Because now, um, maybe you rethink what you did. Maybe you rethink if, like, like I believe, for example, that in the subject of mobility, like car sharing, for example, many OEMs are moving out of it again because they didn't find how to make money with it. But maybe they have to do it differently. Maybe now mm -hmm. it's a chance to like, like rethink these things. And um, because I believe this world is coming and there's no reason to slow down after corona but i see it happen yeah well the, if we didn't know before corona times what the future transportation would look like uh, we're even more confused now and i think time will tell uh, especially about the social impact but uh, but as of that like investments or uh, do you think we'll see a slowdown i mean in israel for the last uh, two months during the Corona times, we did see a lot of investments flowing in, which was quite surprising. But how do you see it in like the, not the long run, but like the, the soon, the, the near future in terms of investments? Well, of obviously times got, through this crisis, times get more difficult. And I work with, with various startups, not only in Israel, but also in, 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 um, in Germany, but also in North America. If you're lucky and you're just behind the founding round, and you're financed through, say, a year, I think you're good, uh, obviously. But if you're just in the middle of the founding round, I see two types of investors. Some, um, and for the example, Kartika had exactly that situation. Some investors um, really stick to their commitment and to the company, and they say, no matter, that doesn't matter, um, we just do what we promise to do. But there's also some other, even big investors, who would say, no, I find this is an opportunity to negotiate the price or to the valuation or or to like make principal considerations um 
then I think you have to, to move on and, and, and find new investors, which you do if you have a really great business model, but it's much more hard. So I think tactically now I think is a time where you can prove as an investor that you stay with the comp stand with your companies, even in tough times. And as a company, you have to make sure you're financed and if you have to reduce your costs. You have to prepare for whatever it takes. And this could, could take a while until we are through this. So I would love, I would like every company to see at least to be able to survive for the next 12, better 24 months uh, with the financing and the run rate they have. Do you think in your idea, Israel can in years time turn into an automotive uh, industry place? Yes, I think you can, because what I just said is that the crisis will cause, hopefully cause um, the OEMs and the suppliers to rethink what they're doing. And one of the core things they do is that there is this tradition of like vertical integration, like you, you need, you need sensors, you need hardware, you need software, you need all kinds of things to build a system. And traditionally, OEMs want to own all of that. Um, they want to own the IP, they want to control all the suppliers. I think in the new world, that's not working anymore. You need high tech, deep tech technology, which you share. Um, and I give you an example at, at, um, at Hyundai, um, they outsourced their auto autonomous driving activities into a new, mm -hmm. into a joint venture they created with Aptiv, uh, which yeah. will be found in, in the next weeks, actually. Um, and. And doing that mean they let go, right? They give it into a new company, which is a deep tech company, which is financed differently than the traditional OEMs are, which has a valuation much different than traditional OEMs are, and which has a culture and people much different. And I think there, I wouldn't know another place in Europe, which is as well suited as, as, as Tel Aviv, Israel, for finding a community of, of young people with excellent education, um, also with an environment of where there is financing available and with a spirit of entrepreneurship and, and the culture of startups. Um, yeah, no, no place like that. So I think if, and then there's these fantastic role models of these super successful startups you had, like Mobileye being the, the first one to mention, which created a whole wave. So everyone is looking at Israel. Israel is also performing. So. What, what should stop you? You should really, I think, go this path further down and, and, and make it the best place um, for people to invest. So, so there's a lot uh, to look for uh, in the future, Probably. both on Israel becoming a center player, investment going in, uh, maybe uh, you joining more uh, boards of, uh, of startups. And uh, yeah, so, so it does like, look like the future, despite COVID, is... is, well, is smiling yeah and maybe one more comment what, what i think of course is yeah. very important um i think one issue we have in in europe or specifically for example in germany we believe mobility is cars and we somehow mm -hmm. want to protect the car industry with this whole thinking of notion of you have to own your car and drive in your own car mm -hmm. and then on top we had of course um the the, the the public transportation but the main thing is is to protect this industry protect cars so there is no city in Germany, for example, who has a strong vision about getting rid of cars and creating a new next level of, of mobility where people share and they, they use public transport and micro mobility and so on and so forth. So I think it would be good um, for, for any place who wants to become like a leader to develop a clear vision, like a city like Tel Aviv is, is pretty chaotic and it's pretty crowded, right? So, so, and I know you're building your public transport, but having a creating a test bed and a demonstration bed and creating a place where you can really demonstrate these technologies and and become um a model for other cities and other places in the world that also of course enables startups to do things like they they could could know of a place and to demonstrate it on a small scale so i think that's right in your turf but that is super really important for setting a good base for for um automotive startups, mobility startups. So I fully agree with what you said. I'm, I'm taking it directly to the government to, so with that, we have to finish. And it's been really interesting, Re really. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. to talk to you and have you. I really enjoyed it.
and um, yeah, have a great rest of the conference. Thank you.